that, uh, let's invite our first guest on the show, Dhananjay Sinha, Head Institutional Research at MK Global Financial Services, joins in. Uh, good morning, Dhananjay. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Uh, before I get to uh, your analysis of the second quarter numbers itself, uh, what's the word on the street? Today's consolidation is going to be brief and uh, uh, in this little bit of a dip that you're getting, you will be looking for excuses to buy? No, I think uh, the markets um, have remained buoyant and I think uh, you know, every correction that we have seen in the recent past, people have actually got into, um, into uh, buying some high beta stocks. So I think uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, trend might actually continue going forward. I mean, notwithstanding the fact that our view uh, from a fundamental standpoint and the market standpoint is somewhat detached and we, we think that if you look at the quarterly results uh, on aggregate level uh, for the results that have been companies that have actually declared results uh, excluding bank and oil and gas uh, the top line growth has actually come down quite uh, sharply and, uh, and and with respect to the margins i think the picture is somewhat mixed uh, uh, but i think the top line growth is actually coming off uh, so uh, and and apart from that we are uh, also expecting that the GDP growth number could actually come down to closer to 5% for the second quarter uh, on the back of the fact that your IIT growth has actually come down and, and your credit growth has actually been fairly uh, low. So I think uh, there is a certain sort of a uh, dichotomy between the markets and the fundamentals. Uh, but I think that will continue in the context that um, global liquidity has been good and that, that there is a certain amount of uh, positive spillover coming from there and that is actually feeding into the expectation that uh, investors have with respect to domestic reforms and uh, over the last uh, two weeks uh, the government has been announcing a couple of things which are significant uh, be it uh, gas pricing, coal, uh, you know, e-auction etc. There has been actions which are fairly speedy on that and on the, uh, on the bank, uh, PSU bank leadership there does seem to be uh, some progress. So I think uh, all these things are feeding into market expectation. So I think uh, the market might actually, investor might actually look at dips to, as buy opportunities. And you see that retail investors have been uh, beelining to, uh, to increase their exposure through SIP, etc. So I think all those developments are happening. Okay. Tanajay, hi, good to see you in this morning. I uh, wanted to ask you about Larson and Tubro. What is your expectation from the numbers today? And are you looking at the numbers as a key direction for maybe your call on the stock as well? Yes, definitely. So uh, our expectation uh, for revenue growth is about 12% and uh, to about, uh, to about uh, 132 billion rupees. Uh, we are expecting margins to be in the region of 11% uh, and an order inflow of about two, uh, 260 billion. Um, uh, important thing that we, want, we would like to see here is what, what kind of order book can, can happen, whether it will be different from what we are expecting. And in, uh, over the previous quarters, we have seen that uh, exports or, or global uh, tenders have been uh, adding to their performance over the past several quarters, is that going to change or not? Currently, roughly about 30% uh, of revenue comes from, come, comes from uh, outside. So uh, we, we are trying to look at, we are trying to gauge whether domestic investment cycle is actually turning around as the market was expecting uh, till some time back. Uh, whereas if you look at uh, the results that Thomax has actually reported um, earlier this week, mm. uh, you know, there, there doesn't seem to be a very strong indication from their management that that uh, there will be a turnaround as far as the domestic investment cycle is concerned. So I think we will have to see whether LNT uh, can actually show a different picture. We have uh, we've had a positive bias on the uh, on LNT. It is possible that in the current uh, re result the margins could actually, one, one thing that we will have to really look at is for the margins, mm. whether that expands or not. So I think there is a, we are more biased to think that uh, the beta margin could actually be better than what we are uh, we are projecting which is around, around 11 percent okay uh, well now let me get to the mid cap boys actually 
Uh, even today, the mm -hmm. mid cap is uh, falling less than the heavies, if you please. So, some mid cap outperformance is uh, there all through this week. Uh, there were some uh, howlers and some very good numbers. Like Ashok Leyland was excellent. Cummins was very good. TD Power was very good. I mean, for the untrained eye, the numbers looked very good. Uh, what did you like best in the mid cap space in terms of uh, result positive surprises? No, so I think uh, with respect to Cummins and also TD Power, these two uh, stocks we have actually identified in our recent investment uh, uh, theme, which was a strategy report. Uh, the argument uh, basically that we were putting across was that uh, uh, some of these companies have uh, derived, you know, better leverage from an exp uh, export-led uh, performance and export-led, uh, uh, you know, contract, etc. Well, with respect to Cummins and TD Power, we have seen both of these things happening. So, with, with respect to I mean, both of these things, where uh, both of these stocks were actually uh, picked. So, but TD Power is something that we had we had particularly emphasized uh, because that was a top pick for action as far as actionable ideas concerned. Over here, we think that uh, you know they they would get a, a certain amount of benefit from operating leverage, and we are expecting that to happen over the next two three years. And uh, hence, uh, I mean, the c current results may have actually reflected some of that. Uh, you know, the company has gone through a certain amount of adjustment over a, over the past uh, past years. Mm. And uh, in terms of, uh, so what we are expecting is that the, the the cost part will actually remain fairly stable. They have actually rationalized that quite a bit, and they have uh, new orders of uh, products uh, or the industrial products that that they are selling to actually increase. So uh, there, there is a possibility of significant positive surprise as far as both top line and margins are concerned. So I think TD Power uh, has been something that we we, we have been uh, liking. In the auto space, you know, I would like I we would like to you know escorts actually undergone a certain correction mm. today. I think we, we we would like to buy that. Oh, uh, you would like to buy it? Sorry? So you see it as a temporary fall, escorts? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So we are saying that it can be a, uh, it can be a. So I think the results have been pretty good uh, as far as Escort is concerned uh, with respect to the uh, two-wheeler sales. So I think that correction can be bought. Okay. okay. All right, Dhananjay, we leave it at that. Uh, any disclosures you'd like to make before you go? No. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks very much for joining in. So that's the fundamental view coming in from MK at this point in time.